Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are here. My name is Pastor Manuel Johnson. I'm the co-host of Line in the Sand. We have Apostle David Andrade here. Praise the Lord. And we've been talking about the last few weeks, the glory, the glory, the glory in the bride of Christ, which is wonderful because you know what? He says, I'm coming for a bride. Yes. He says it. I am coming for a bride. He didn't say, you know, uh, yeah, he's coming for a bride. He wants our, to be without spot or wrinkle. But he's coming for a bride to prepare for the marriage of the Lamb. And there's glory in the bride. There's glory in the, church, the, the, the bride of Christ. So much glory. Now, I've said this before, even on my own personal programs. And we're, like you said, and we're going to have... Apostle David, just, just move into it because I, I believe that God's going to use him to give us a rama word for today <laughs> regarding the glory and the bride. But I want you to understand something that we hear a lot of negativity going on, but there is a lot happening in the body of Christ, in the move of God around the world, it will not prevail. The enemy cannot prevail. And I have good news for you. I am part of the bride of Christ. David is part of the bride of Christ. We're part of his glory. Are you? Last week, David Andrade was on my program and Oh, well, you know, maybe it was two weeks ago. And he was speaking on the bride. And I still remember. Thank you, Emmanuel. It was so profound with the words I was using, the words uh, Apostle David was using. It was so profound that I told him to re-air it again. It, it didn't do it justice just to have that one time only. I asked the network to re-air it again. It mm. was so profound. Wow. And, 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 I'm, and I'm praying that you will, will, will take off where you left off. Actually, I'm going to start even before then. Go ahead. And if, if it's okay, I'm going to talk about, first of all, what God did. And everything about, everything about God is methodical. Amen. When the feast days play, take place, that is so specific in time mm. that he does things. He appoints days Right. And, and uh, one of these days, I, I know we've heard about the court of heaven, but I, I'm going to take you to a side of it that hasn't been talked about yet. Take us there. And uh, because everything, uh, there are court dates in heaven, mm -hmm. and they happen on feast days. They're mm. God's feast days. And uh, God's very specific about the movement of uh, the stars and the, mm. and the moon mm. and the sun. Mm. It says in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, that he placed them there as signs. Mm. And, uh, and these signs are times to, to alert the, the, the church to the timing of God. And, and, the, and the, the, la the church of the final age is supposed to be aware of God's timing. Right, that's true. M much of the prophetic... Uh, uh, understanding of revelation is is set for a time of understanding wow. and that comes in in the in the age of understanding which is God's final time the final mm. uh, uh, culmination of 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 uh, not the not going into the millennium but before that time of coming into the millennium into the seventh day there's a preparation into the seventh day because the because just when you when you see the pattern in the in the in the book of Genesis on the sixth day yes, man yes, was created, yes. we're in the sixth day right now, coming into so the we're close. So the seventh day is the time of of glory, mm. but there's a preparation. God uses uh, a men and women in that time. He gives them the revelation to begin to reveal uh, to the church what He is doing next. And we are in that time. And so I'm going to start with before in the book of Genesis, 
that uh, when it's when the woman is is created, if you remember, we were talking about that that man was created outside of the garden, right? And, and it says that God placed him in the garden, and something t- took place. There was a he was lonely. Some people believe that God made an heir, that there was an heir there, Mm. that man was created. uh, There was something that God didn't understand when in his creation. And, but what we don't understand is that God put that characteristic into man. He caused him. That was when he molded him, his, his, there was, he was going to put him in a need to cry out for a bride. Wow. And so the beginning of the revelation of the bride, we see the formation of the bride that God created man with a need for a, for a bride. And everything that we, that we see, even in creation, is methodical. It's thought out. Even uh, when we look at the book of John, the first the the book of John, the very first chapter, is is a re is an, a re understanding of the of the first day of creation, mm. when when God created the heavens and the earth, and and the, that the earth was without form, and it was void. It was form, and there there was a. Uh, it was there, but there was, it was chaotic. And it needed to have something take place in that realm in order to bring forth creation into, into devastation. Because that's what chaos is. Chaos is devastation. And so we see the, the, the birthing. And it said that literally in the, in the Greek, in the John chapter 1, it's, it's that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. But that word with is a towards. It's a pros, the word pros. That the Father and the Son, it shows that they were looking at each other. There was something, go- there was an intimacy. It wasn't the intimacy that we know as, as husband and wife. But there was this intimacy that took place and that in that intimacy, the birthing of creation took place. Everything that is birthed takes place in God. In the, uh, I, just, the, I just got hit with the presence of the Lord. Mm. Uh, in, in this intimacy that brings forth another step in, in God. And God's been showing me the book of Esther. Okay. And Esther, without understanding it, is the book of the bride. Come on. It's Come on. the book of the birthing of a bride. A bride that uh, let's let's rerun. I, I used to I used to read the the part about Veste of his queen and and how he removed her and many many people think well he was so angry you know he didn't Persians they don't know how to treat a woman I want to tell you something that isn't true his heart was towards his queen his bride Vesti was his bride but there was something about that bride that was haughty was prideful and we may and in understanding that that the that that the king took and he showed Vesti off, and and quite literally it expresses a woman who had to bear herself naked, and he said, "I will," and she said, "I will not do this," and I was I always wondered why it was that she would not bear her nakedness. Mm. And, and, and the Lord showed me, in fact, he just showed me just a couple nights before, as he was unveiling the bride to me through the book of Esther, that what was taking place there was that she was there to show the model 
of what that God was coming had come, just like he came to that the tree, the fig tree, uh, expecting to find fruit, but there wasn't there any. Wasn't any yeah. and, in, and, and God was looking for a church that would bear itself naked, that would show forth righteousness and holiness in this age. And, he, and it's talking about an age where he does not find it. Mm. And so out of, in, there's a court in heaven. I'm not going to explain that. I don't want that as part of this. But we see that there were reports that were taken before the king. And, and, and it led to a searching out for a bride that was worthy. And so there was, there was a word sent out to all the nations and all of the, na the known nations at that time were part of that empire. And they summoned the virgins, the, those that were found to have beauty. And they brought them all in. Mm -hmm. They brought them all in. And they became part of a harem. Mm. And, they, and they, they were bathed in oils because they were going to have their day with the king, wow. to be presented before the mm. king. But, and, the, and if you look at the story of this king, that he was an older man. He was not young. The Persian king? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, for some reason his name escapes me. The Persian king that married... Uh, Esther, his name is, uh, one of our audience knows this. Go ahead and say it out loud. Okay, you see, now that sounds like tongues to me. <laughs> yeah, say, it, say it again. Say it again. There it is. Okay, I, I, so I, used, I used, you know, I, I, I know it a little bit different, yeah. but it's okay. Okay, but so, so. So yes. and, and by the way, our audience is, is our, one of our audiences is, is he's also Jewish, Persian. So, yeah. so he's saying it in the authentic way. So this, for me to get that one, I, yeah. you know, I had to do it in I, my I sleep. I believe the name of <laughs> it is uh, Ashuras. Ashuras, yeah. yeah but, uh, the English version. <laughs> yes. But, but what we see was that, that uh, he was an older person. Yes, he was. And that he was looking for a beautiful bride mm. that, would, that would represent his queen in the kingdom. Right, that he and was. And for all of the other that were brought in, there was no instructions. Mm. They came in with a hope that they would be chosen. But there was a man named Mordecai. Come on. Who prepared Esther to be a queen. From, from birth. Not from birth, from because from birth? She, was, she was an orphan. Well, that's true. You're yeah. absolutely right. She had come into her, her uncle's home. That's her, right. The brother of her, of, that was a brother of, of her real husband, or, or the, of her real father. I but was the, cousin. but okay. when he was brought in, when uh -huh. she was brought in, she, was, she knew to prepare herself to be a queen. So she did something that was very different. She began to inquire, not knowing th that, that she would be giving up all of her selfish wants and desires, and they are not wrong, to be a queen meant that she began to inquire what would please this king. And, and as we know the, the story, that she began to prepare herself. She began to inquire what the king liked, what manner of dress, what manner of person. She was a different type of person. She was even alien to the thinking of the Persian. But she began to take her heart and prepare herself to please the king. Mm. 
she began to be, to, uh, she was taken into a harem as one of the chosen ones and began bathing in the oils of fragrance. And we, we know that, in, that there is a difference in the, the, these oils of fragrance that it talks about in the New Testament. These oils are the, the, is the book of 1 Corinthians. It's yeah. what love is. It's, it's the intimacy it's, it, that, that God desires because it, it even tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, husbands... Love your wives. This word love is agape. Where, here we find the agape love in the, in the first, first Corinthians when Paul's describing not the outward appearance, but the inward appearance, the inward preparation. And so Esther began to prepare herself not only with the beauty on the outside, because the women that were going to be, that come before the king were going to have an outward appearance of loveliness. But, but what he <clears throat> was looking for was the beauty on the inside. inside. And the fragrance of this love that has no walls. Because this man was, was looking for something. He, he did not, he was not quick to bring a woman into his court. Or he sought for her. He waited a year. A year. That's right. And, and as the women prepared themselves to be prepared, they waited a year to be prepared and to be brought in, for their day to be brought in before the king. And they all showed themselves in beauty. They were all dressed in, in similar ways, but, but she had inquired, so she knew what the king's taste was. He knew how, she knew how to, to, to prepare her hair, the dressings, and, and the fragrance that, that he was looking for. And, and what we don't understand is that we're coming into... The, just uh, the same way that the bride was prepared. The bride was not birthed outside the garden the same way that Adam was. She was formed inside the garden. <clears throat> wow. And, and these women, th once they were concubines, once they were brought into the harem, would never again be able to leave that place. And, but they, had, they were assured the pleasures of, of life. The problem is that many people today that are called to be the bride are pleased, are happy with the pleasures of that. But, but Esther began to seek for favor. She sought favor. And she moved in favor through the court. She moved in favor in preparation. She moved in favor because she wanted something that none of the others wanted. She was after the king's heart. And to obtain mm. the king's heart, she also would have to go beyond the appearance and, and seek for his heart, for a heart of intimacy, and to have intimacy, it calls for a person that will remove every wall and obstacle that keeps back intimacy. God uses the pattern of the marriage to show us this. He shows us that, that in, in the Jewish preparation, the the man, this usually took place at the age of 13, was, was the age of also, it wasn't just the age of man, manhood, it was the age of marriage. 13. 13. And, and the father would bring the, 
his son to the house. And at that time, for the first time, there was a gift exchange. And, and the woman had to say, yes, wow. I will betroth my heart to you. Mm. See, it was a betrothal that took place of the soul of that person from the very beginning. And the betrothal meant that she was going to preserve her being, her soul, and her heart, that she would prepare it, that there would be no obstacles in their intimacy. And, and so the preparation took place with three things. Some people don't talk about the third thing, but it's important that we talk about that part. There was, first of all, the, the gift. In a, in a marriage, in a betrothal, there's a ring. We usually call it the engagement ring. Mm. There was a cup of wine that they were going to share together. That cup of wine began that says, the two of us now, we're betrothing our intimacy to one another. We're not going to give that intimacy to no one else. That intimacy is betrothed to you for a day of in, that we will be joined together. Wow. Usually that day was about a year, but many times in a, in a house it wasn't very long. It depended on the time of preparation. And some houses, they were wealthy, and so they actually brought, it, brought the wife into the house of the father. But that wasn't the case really in, in Jewish tradition. That wasn't the case. There was a preparation of taking and building wow. a house. And the third thing was very, very important. It was the kiss. There was an... And a lot of people stay away from that. But no, there was a kiss. And, and, and during the time, uh, there wasn't, that was, he wasn't going to go away and not return. There would be a coming back, sometimes, many times, to, and a betrothal and, and, and of sharing their love that they had for one another come until on. the day of consummation. Mm. So the wedding was the day of consummation. So, so in, there was a preparation that took place for that. We, it gives us a bigger, a greater idea of what happened on the king's wedding day. That, that even though the friends of the bridegroom, they were there rejoicing and they were drinking and having fun with one another and rejoicing because the the husband had gone, the bride had gone into the, the bridegroom had gone into the bride. He was going to come back with the sheets that proclaimed that the, that the wedding had taken place, that had been consummated. Wow. wow. And so all through the time there was going to be this exchange of a gift. There, the, 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 Bride to be would bring gifts of love. He would bring, who knows? Maybe he brought flowers. I don't know. Uh, but he certainly brought other gifts, and there was an exchange again of a kiss, as a, the kiss was the promise. So the the kiss is the word that we get. There's two words for ki for worship. Yes, the word kiss. And so I'm just going to close right now and just say that that I'm we've begun to tell you, and if you would like to invite this, this, the bride into your heart today, he's, his name is Jesus. And if you'll just pray with me, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Take away every sin. Take every, every Write sin. my name in your book of life. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Give to me your Holy Spirit. Give to me your Holy Spirit. Cause me to be your bride. Cause me to be your bride. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time here, Line in the Sand. God bless you all. We love you. Bye-bye.